the forehead of your robot. I recently found a creepy pasta that was, for a while, lost media. I had originally read it on X around 2009, and while I didn't remember the specifics, I remember one scene vividly. A guy murders a woman by stuffing her feet first into a wood chipper. The idea was that the woman would suffer in agony until she died. That extra level of cruelty always haunted me, which is probably why this story would pop into my head every so often for years to come. I would try to look it up from time to time, but with no luck. The Creepypasta wiki didn't have it, neither did creepypasta.com or .org. I couldn't even find it on Wattpad. All I could find were details of some murder case from a while ago. I ended up putting the story out of my head for a while, thinking I just made it up or imagined it. Then, a couple of years back, I heard of a story called, Camera Heads. For those who don't know, Camera Heads was a creepypasta posted around 2009 on X ended up being lost for over a decade. Around 2020, a search started that ended with the original story plus an associated video being found. I realized that if Camera Heads could be found, then maybe this wood chipper story was also out there. Inspired by this, I made posts on lost media forums, checked every old thread and wiki I could find, and pushed the Wayback Machine to its limits. Unfortunately, none of that got me anywhere. All I found were dead links, unarchived pages, and mentions of that murder case. I kept searching for weeks with no luck. Just when I was about to give up, I got an email from someone going by, Chipper, minus the E. The only thing they sent was a PNG file named, Admission. Opening it up, I saw it was a screen cap of an X thread from 2009. I took a closer look at it, and realized that this was the story I'd been looking for. I sent the image to some folks I met during the search to make sure it was authentic. They assured me that it was the real deal. After that, I sent an email thanking Chipper, though I didn't receive any response. Now, I'm not going to provide a copy of the story in its entirety here, and you'll see why shortly. I will say that the story was a lot more graphic and descriptive than I remembered. The woman in the story was described very vividly, black hair, dark skin, a scar on her left cheek, green eyes, 190 pounds, and 5 feet 8 inches. The wood chipper element did happen, but the killer stalked it right before it got to the victim's head, and used the head for, well, I'd rather not say. I like to pride myself on having a strong stomach and not being too bothered by things I read, but even I was getting a bit sick reading what was done with that severed head. After finishing the story, the initial excitement of finally finding it was replaced by disgust about the actual contents of the story. Maybe it was better off lost. Weirdly enough, I felt a weird sort of familiarity that I couldn't place. It wasn't the sense that I'd read this exact story on X before. It was more the feeling that I'd read these exact details somewhere else before. This feeling nagged at me for a couple of days, as I tried to rack my brains and remember why this felt so familiar. I ended up checking out some of the earlier keywords I used during the search, which led me to the case of Marilyn Branson. Her story started as a missing persons case. Her missing person poster showed a picture of a woman with dark skin, black hair, a scar on her left cheek, and green eyes. The height and weight listed were 5 feet 8 inches and 190 pounds, respectively. The search ended after a year, when a couple camping in the woods stumbled upon a wood chipper next to an abandoned cabin. The wood chipper was covered in dried blood, and in the cabin was a decomposing head. Police were called, and tests were run on the head and blood, confirming they were Branson's. There also was, police noted, DNA around the face and mouth of the severed head, but they were unable to identify to whom it belonged to. The case went cold, and to this day no one knows who killed Marilyn Branson. The strangest thing though is that Marilyn Branson went missing in 2010. Her head was found in 2011. The story I read was posted in 2009. Was this coincidence, or did the person who wrote this story predict what would happen to Marilyn Branson? And how could they have predicted something so specific unless they actually did it? Was this story a warning? A threat? A fantasy that was eventually acted upon? And finally there was the question that had been gnawing at me since I received that email. 
Was Chipper the one who wrote the story? Did Chipper kill Marilyn Branson? Unsettled by all of this, I decided to forward this information to the FBI. Chances are it probably wouldn't amount to much, all I had was a story, a weird coincidence, and an email address. But I had to do something. If I had the key to solving a decade-old murder and did nothing with it, I wouldn't be able to live with myself. After sending in the tip, I tried putting the case out of my head and moving on with my life, which I was actually able to do for a while. I went to work, caught up on some shows, and hung out with friends. The word wood chipper didn't even cross my mind. I convinced myself that I'd never have to hear about this case again. Then today I got another email from Chipper. The subject line was simply, snitch. The email itself featured a story in which the narrator gruesomely tortures somebody for days on end before finally dumping their victim's half-live body into a wood chipper. Now, like the last story, the victim in this one was very vividly described. However, this victim wasn't Marilyn Branson. This victim, for instance, had brown eyes like me. As I read on, I realized with a growing sense of unease that the victim and I actually had a lot in common. We had the same hair color and skin color. We wore the same height and same weight. Hell, we shared the same scar above the left ear and the same birthmark on our back. I knew this story was about me, and that knowledge filled me with terror. But what truly terrified me was the story's final line. See you soon.